All right, I got something different for you guys today. Today we're looking at the 1.05 patch notes. Uh, now, real quick, I just want to mention that I'm actually looking at this on a Reddit post because the actual patch notes have been taken down. You guys probably won't actually see this until the patch is actually released. So there might be some changes uh, in the actual patch notes. Maybe there's some mistakes here. Uh, but if there are any differences, I'll make sure to put that in a pinned comment. And before we actually get into breaking this down, I do want to quickly ask you guys if... You guys would like to see update videos relating to older builds, right? Uh, since we're getting a new set of frame parts and four new weapons and a lot of balance changes, right? A lot of builds could probably use some updating at this point. I'd like to know if you guys want to see like a quick like three, four minute update video and like a pinned comment or just a pinned comment on the original video. Let me know in the comments. Now getting into the patch itself, we've got some pretty exciting news. Ranked matchmaking is coming. The whole ranked system to accompany it, of course. Uh, some leaderboards as well. I'm not going to go too deep into the details here. If you really want to read this and know exactly how this is going to work, you can just pause and read it for yourself, right? Uh, anyways, of course, there's a uh, you know, promotion system, all that, everything you expect. We're getting nameplates as well that you can customize. Uh, so, you know, very nice there. Some nice customization stuff being added. Very, very nice. Now, moving on to the balance adjustments. Lots of buffs and nerfs here. Assault rifles seem to be getting just a accumulated impact and range. And also a recoil buff all around uh, the machine guns getting something similar. You know, better range. Uh, I also thought the SRG was already pretty decent. So this getting a range buff is actually going to be really, really nice. Uh, can't wait to see how this performs now. The bazooka is getting massive nerfs. Actually, you only see one nerf here. But there's actually about a total of three nerfs to bazookas in this patch. Two more indirect nerfs, right? Uh, but, but reduced explosion AoE. I assume this means probably both the actual an explosion itself and the detonation radius uh so this is going to probably be a really really big nerf to bazookas uh if it does also nerf the detonation radius right especially now the lra decreased attack power and cooling and increased uh you know build up and charge time so this is a pretty sizable nerf uh but it doesn't decrease the actual charge attack damage so it looks like the lra is still going to be a fantastic handheld directed damage punisher it does about as much damage as the lcs and it's very, very good. I mean, you know, this is like a pretty decent nerf in its spam. And again, it also is getting a charge time nerf. So it's a pretty big nerf all around. But I think this weapon's still going to be very good. Just because its charge attack hits so hard. It's a great weapon to pair for shield. You can, you know, keep it charged under the shield. And just blast wound with a direct hit. Something like that, right? I don't think this is going to be a, you know, completely devastating nerf to the LRA. And moving on, we've got the plasma rifle getting a buff, the 760p, uh, 760PR plasma rifle, not the nebula. Decreased attack, heat buildup, and increased projectile speed. Definitely needed this, in my opinion. The uh, nebula is just so much better than this plasma rifle. So it definitely needed some buff. Now, the core shield getting some nerfs. Uh, the only shield list is getting some nerfs, by the way. Uh, despite, I don't even think the core shield is probably the best shield in the game. Uh, but... Because we are getting those pulse missile launchers, I think, you know, shields are getting an indirect nerf. So maybe that's why they're a little hesitant to nerf of the rest of the shields at the moment, right? But anyways, the core shields are getting decreased impact damaging, uh, increased impact dampening. There we go. And its instance guard stats are getting nerfed as well, right? So this is probably a pretty big nerf to the coral shield. Uh, very needed, especially since it's basically immune to, or it is literally immune to pulse interference. Uh, the sh core shield is probably going to be really, really good post patch because if those new missiles are really good, the other shields could be looking at a pretty bad time. You slap on that pulse uh, uh, missile launcher and you might just absolutely delete shields, right? Now these split missiles getting buffs all around by looks like increased guidance and middle missile and missile payload splitting closer to target. This actually might make these quite a lot better. I'm actually going to give these another try and see if I like them now. I'm pretty excited about this could be another uh, type of missiles just being much, much, much better, right? Uh, now, the cluster missile launcher delivery boy getting a tracking trajectory buff. Honestly, uh, just looking at this, I still don't think this is going to be good, unfortunately. So, um, it is what it is, right? Now, the plasma missiles, the VPMs getting a nerf, unsurprisingly. Decreased guidance and adjusting their fire interval so timing each missile hit is less spread out. Um... Depending on how this works out, this actually might be a bit of a buff. Depends on how much this guidance is nerfed, right? If the guidance nerf isn't so massive to the point that it's like literally useless, like uh like kind of the other verticals are, 
The plasma, I think the VPMs are probably still going to be good. I mean, this is kind of both a buff, buff and a nerf at the same time. Uh, if it hits queen, you're probably going to get have an easier time of dealing like the full damage. But if it's not a queen hit, you're going to probably deal less damage overall. Because one thing that's really nice was because the kind of delay in between the missiles was like they kind of track a little bit individually and it can be really hard to escape all of them. But on a queen hit, if your opponent isn't paying super close attention, this actually might be a buff in your overall damage output. Uh, we will see, though. It really does depend on this guidance nerf and how significant it is, in my opinion. Now, moving on, frame parts, the Melander getting a recoil control buff. The Mind Alpha legs getting decreased weight. Could be interesting. Depends on how much the weight is, but these could be some really good legs now. Tetrapods also getting some nerfs. Uh, they, although the EP242, 424s are getting a uh, hovering speed buff, which could be really, really nice. Uh, they are getting quick boost acceleration nerf, so both the 424 and the Veril getting that nerf, right? The Fortaleza's taking a pretty big hit. Increased assault boost uh, and AP. Increased assault boost energy consumption, and the weight has more impact on its mobility. Now, this is a very, very big nerf. Even if, the, even if each of these nerfs are pretty small, altogether this is going to be a pretty big nerf to the Fortaleza, um, which in my opinion is kind of a, like a fourth indirect nerf to the Bazookas, by the way. <laughs> and then I think everyone was expecting this. The Brussels, of course, getting a nerf. Increased quick boost energy consumption and decreased assault boost thrust. That means the, like, uh, like the, the dodge spam during assault boost, that's going to drain more energy now, of course, and assault boost is going to be slower. No surprise here. The Brutals were very, very, very strong. You put that on a heavy build, and they're still super fast, despite their super heavy weight, right? Uh, I don't think anyone's surprised by that nerf. Now, we've got another indirect nerf to bazookas and also grenade launchers, I guess. ACs with tank legs will now perform a readying action at the moment of firing bazookas or grenade launchers. Um, I don't think this will probably stop you in place, but it's probably going to give you a bigger window to react to bazookas and grenade launchers being fired, right? So this is a pretty significant nerf to bazookas, especially combined with the explosion radius nerf. Uh, and there's another nerf coming on later in the patch, and it's another indirect nerf. You know, pretty big nerfs to bazookas, right? Uh, bipedal, reverse joint, and tetrapod legs all are getting nerfed uh, in their like kick combos, like kick into melee weapons. These combos are getting nerfed. There's some pretty devastating combos. Um, I know, like recently, like one of the, when the meta builds was using like uh, heavy legs and getting a kick into the hammer, for example, and was just really, really disgusting combo. Very, very, very powerful. That of course is being uh, removed, un understandably, right? And also, uh, tetrapods getting a uh, reduced movement due to recoil when firing a weapon with high recoil while in mid air. Um, this guy should be kind of both a nerf and a buff. If it makes it easier to float longer, like uh, it says reduced movement. Does it mean uh, it you, keeps you kind of hovering longer or does it slow you down, right? We'll see. Uh, this could be a buff or a nerf. I'm actually not entirely sure based on how this reads. Uh, maybe I'm just like being brain dead at the moment, but I'm just like not understanding this. Um, <laughs> now, uh, we've got a bunch of bug fixes, right? Uh, a lot of the couple of nice quality of light changes here. Uh, I mean, the Curtis and Harris getting you know, a visual effect overheating is nice. Uh, you know, it's a quick turn for us for going up, which is nice. Uh, kind of the big thing here I am I care about is this line right here. Cued input now accepted for melee weapon attacks while switching weapons with the weapon bay. This is going to be really, really, really nice. Uh, something kind of an issue with this game if you have a melee weapon on your back. And this is actually part of the reason I didn't like um, having a melee weapon swap was sometimes you switch weapons and if you press like the attack button too quickly, the attack just simply wouldn't come out, right? Uh, so it looks like that's not going to be an issue anymore. So I'm probably going to be a lot more amenable or a lot more favorable to uh, weapon swaps, right? So very, very exciting. Um, I'm excited to see how that works out. Uh, and then just a lot of other kind of like mitigated attack points uh, disparity due to leg types and melee weapons for enemy tracking, English weapon directory, etc. This could be a really nice sort of consistency buff to melee. Uh, we'll see how exactly this works out. Hopefully this means like, hopefully like height differences won't be such a big deal. I know there is a bit of an issue where like if you have like a really tall AC, sometimes it could cause your melee attack to miss. Uh, so we'll see how this works out, but this could be a really nice quality of life uh, for melee weapons, right? Lots of other stuffs 
I don't really want to go through all this. If you want to read through all of these, uh, you can kind of pause as I scroll through here. But lots of bug fixes, which is nice. Uh, one thing I did mention is they did fix the um, the bug with melee weapons, where if you were charging a shoulder-mounted unit, they would have like insane tracking. You've probably seen like the coral oscillator Beyblading. That's uh, that's been fixed. Thank you, God. Right? <laughs> that's been fixed. And there's one final thing I want to talk about, and it's regarding the online play, the netcode, mitigated sync issues between players for projectile impact timing of attacks with certain weapons such as bazookas and plasma rifles. What I assume this means is that these weapons have become defender sided, right? It, so kind of the issue currently is sometimes you'll just get hit by a bazooka that looks like it shouldn't have hit you, right? And that's no longer going to be the case if this works out as red here in the patch notes, right? This is yet another nerf to bazookas, by the way. Also a nerf to the plasma rifle, especially with the nebula. Uh, although I don't think the Nebula is quite as affected by this because it has such a massive detonation, radi detonation radius of 15 meters, right? So the Nebula affected less so than the Bazookas. I also wonder if it's not just Bazookas and the Plasma Rifle. Maybe some of the other weapons have been affected by this as well. Uh, but you know, obviously they've listed those because they're kind of the standout uh, problem child in that regard, right? Uh, but yeah, lots of nerfs to Bazookas, as you can see. And... Uh, yeah, lots of other like really nice changes. Again, big uh, thanks to this guy Corel in seventy eight, getting these patch notes here in the comments for us that missed it earlier. And yeah, that's all there is to talk about. Again, let me know if you'd like to see a proper update video to old bit uh, old builds, or if you'd just like to see uh, you know like a quick pin comment and maybe I make a community post uh, mentioning that I did it. Right. Anyways. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And before we end this, a quick thank you to our members, as always. Uh, any tier of the membership is greatly appreciated. The support helps a lot. Uh, you, of course, get some benefits. You get your name here, of course, as you can see on screen right now. Uh, there's other things, of course. Uh, if you do the Purple Cat tier or higher, you can see videos a day early. If you do the Giga Cat tier, you even get the... Essentially, get your video request made priority. Um... Not guarantee I'll make the video you want, but if I was going to make it anyways, or I'm interested in making the video, I will try to make it a priority as much as possible, right? Now, that's about all there is to say about the video, about the patch notes. I'll catch you guys in the next one.